Hi, my name is Bob and I'm renovating this 1973 Egg Harbor Sport Fish Boat. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Renovation Sport Fish. No, this is not a boat behind me as I obviously you can see. Um, just looking for a different perspective in my shop to film because I'm tired of filming in the shop and I haven't been over to the boat. I wanted to get this video out so figured I'd turn the camera onto this part of the garage and um, this is actually a project that's patiently waiting. I've had this car forever and uh, it keeps getting put aside for everything else <laughs> that's going on in my life. But someday I'll get back to it and maybe it'll be a, a video series. But anyways, we're not here to talk about that. Uh, we're ta here to talk about the boat I'm restoring. Now, if you are new to one of my videos, or to the channel, if you're actually watching the channel, um, I'm restoring a 1973 Egg Harbor Sportfish boat. Been doing it for many years now. I'm an amateur restorer, and um, it's just been a lot of my time being spent on this, and it's just going to take a long time to get it to where I want it to be. So, um, hopefully you enjoy uh, what you're going to be watching now and uh, you'll catch up with the previous episodes and uh, maybe subscribe. That'd be great. Uh, if you don't like it, well, I guess you just don't watch it. So anyways, uh, last episode, for the people who have been following along, I did mention that I was going to be doing some fiberglass in this episode, but when putting it together, uh, it got way too long and I had to cut it off. Um, so. This is going to be more preparation, removing some wood pieces and some fiberglass tabbing and things like that. Just get everything prepared for the fiberglass on the transom. And the next episode will definitely be um, the fiberglassing. So anyways, let's get started with the video. What I want to work on this weekend is getting this all prepared for fiberglassing. So to get in behind here to prep all this, I have to remove this board here, which holds the uh, there's a piece of wood that goes on top that holds up the rudder. It's the rudder here on the port side. And then a piece, this piece back here that actually um, holds the fuel tank from sliding backwards. And you can see that this piece isn't going to be too much of a challenge to get out. Uh, and he, this one he's probably shouldn't either. Uh, probably going to only remove from here back. The piece goes all the way underneath me. Ties into a cross beam here um, but I'd like to keep this here just so I can uh, sit on it and use this piece of plywood uh, as a base just to work so I don't want to take out the whole thing I'll probably end up redoing it anyways I want it to go all the way back to the transom um, looks like they cut it that way from the factory but it, maybe it was too short and I don't know why they didn't tie it in but they didn't uh, so anyways that's what I'm going to get started on I remove this piece here and uh, this other piece of the gas tank on both sides. So after looking at this a little bit closer, I decided I'm just going to remove this entire board and uh, I'll show you why. So here's the entire length of the port side board I want to remove. And um, the tabbing looks pretty good on this side. And you can see how it goes all the way to that piece and then kind of stopped short over here. Now the weird thing here is if you look at the stringer there's a limber hole there. It's not very pretty. I'll fix that up. And there's another one back here. But when they put this piece in there's no limber holes. So there's no way for the water to get out of here except for going all the way to the back here and coming out where that wire uh, comes through. That's a ground wire for the fuel tank. But even the piece of wood back there is kind of cut off funny, so it's it's a little strange. Obviously it was put in later on after the fact. But the reason I'm going to take the whole thing out, you can see it really is not held in by much. I could probably just get it by hand, but on this side the tabbing is totally away from the board. Yeah, try to get it over here. Uh, it's not too bad back here, but I think if I just have a, uh, just get a 
putty knife or something like that and get in between there, I can probably pry it right off. So that's probably what I'm just going to try first. Uh, be the same thing for the fuel tank piece. Uh, this side looks like it's attached pretty good, but it's not going to take much but a putty knife to remove these pieces. So, anyways, I'll show show you how I'm going to do it. Okay, that was easy. All right, that one's out. Piece of mahogany. So now you can see they basically nailed through this cross uh, beam here and uh, into the end of it. Didn't really attach it at the bottom, so really it was just being held in with this tabbing. In the back here, this is just a really a shim that they uh, it's a shim in here that they put in to uh, just get it probably to be the right level to hold up this uh, thing here. So wow, that was uh, quite easy. I'll cut off this tabbing. wood bracket to hold the uh, fuel tank from sliding backwards and that's actually sitting on the fuel tank right here this bracket thing so went in 
went in like that. Tabbing was down here, and that sat against the back side of the uh, fuel tank. Probably not going to do it exactly like that with the new fuel tanks. Um, I'll probably want to put some sort of permanent piece in the back here and then have a piece that bolts to it um, in between. So it'll be a permanent piece and then a, a removable piece or an adjustable piece. Uh, but I haven't really thought too much about that yet. There's so many more things to do before I get to that. But it's just really about cleaning everything up. Now this side I haven't taken the tabbing off yet. It's still sitting there piece just pulled right out of it and then there's all this weird fiberglass pieces like this is sitting above above the floor and I can feel underneath there's something under there so it's probably a piece of like I noticed on the other side a piece of fiberglass maybe when they did this piece that was sticking up and instead of cutting it off and fixing it they just um, fiberglassed over it so that's probably what I'll find under there that's what I found on the other side like I said uh, and then like here, you know, instead of cutting the tabbing a little shorter, they just kind of jammed it into the fuel tank. So, you know, those are those are the things they did when you're doing a production boat, you know. I don't have to do that, though. Um, and then here, here, here's another little example of something I'm going to be cutting off today. You know, it's just a little, little blob of fiberglass that they just kind of left there. You know, nobody saw it. So, why mess with it? You know, you don't have the time. You're trying to make some money on these boats. So, I understand that 100%. But, you know, for me, I'm not making any money on this. And it's my time and my effort and my boat. So, I'm going to clean all that stuff up and get it nice. I want to paint it all nice and white um, with some bilge paint. You know, down in here, there's all kinds of stuff on the... Stuck in, in the actual fiberglass that dripped down. You know, I just want to get it all cleaned up really good. And, um, yeah, uh, so that's what I'm going to be up to today and probably for the next week. I mean, I could do some of this with an actual grinder, but it's going to kick dust everywhere, especially since I have to have the fan on. So I decided to just use my oscillating tool and just kind of shave away at this stuff. And it works pretty good. It's a little slow and tedious, but you can see the area I did here. This had all kinds of junk sticking up. Uh, it's got a little pit here, uh, but this is all just like fiberglass that resin that just kind of dripped down as they were doing things and has wood chips in it and all kinds of stuff to try to clean up. You can see there's like a real pile of stuff here and it's just built up in this corner and kind of on the other side too up in here. It's just where they just didn't clean it out and then the resin just came down and socked it all in so all that needs to be cleaned up i don't want any of that there's some more stuff you know there's like grime and dirt stuck in here now uh so i want to get all this nice and cleaned up and uh do some new stuff down there there's these are other areas i'm gonna hit later on like way down the road but no concentration on that right now this side i already started grinding down the fiberglass around my new piece. I had to stop about there just because the, uh, the fuel tank bracket was in the way. a little too far away to see any detail of what I was actually doing there I'll try to zoom in on some other part but anyways uh, basically this was the old tabbing uh, for some of this wood piece that was here it wasn't totally covered but this is the remnants of it and so really I'm just trying to get this edge a little smoother so the fiberglass will transition from the whole fiberglass to this old tabbing the old tabbing is on there not coming off but just to get the edge and I'll now then I'll come back and do sanding to get it all sanded smooth but I just want to get the big stuff off first so I'm not trying to sand all that off this cuts it off a lot quicker uh, and then like down here there was that big chunk sticking out with all the dirt behind it 
Um, so I'll clean up this even a little bit more with the oscillating tool. You know, just some other little pieces that were sticking out. Um, it's like all these little edges here. Uh, try, instead of trying to totally just sand them with a sander, I like to just go over them with that oscillating saw and get the big stuff off. And then come back and not spend so much time with the sander sanding it. Uh, so that's what I'm going to just continue to do here. Probably not going to film much more of that because you get an idea what I'm doing. I could just get to it and do it, but maybe on the other side where I have some bigger stuff to do, I'll uh, do some filming on that. So this is an update on the progress. You can see this is the starboard side. Uh, I got all that stuff out of the corner. It was all that wood and everything. Got it nice and cleaned up here. No more, nothing sticking out anymore. Uh, I'll move over to the other side of this stringer here and. Uh, you can see I got it all cleaned up on this side. Still got to do a lot of work over here, but those don't have to be taken off to the fiberglass transom, so I'm not going to do them. But I still got to get in and grind some things. Uh, but that, all this work was just done with the oscillating saw. Uh, then I went in there with some degreaser after because there was a lot of grease and grime stuck behind that those fiberglass pieces I cut off. So. That's the uh, starboard side. Now we'll go to the port side because I wanted to show something on this side. So over here, power on the port side behind the fuel tank here. And I showed this earlier and uh, I've already cut the big pieces of fiberglass off that was sticking up right here, tabbing. Uh, then I just cut this off and I said I suspected there was something underneath and that's why this piece is just uh, bubbled up like that and when I cut it and pulled it off you can see uh, there's a piece left from when they put this put this corner piece in which is part of fiberglassing this uh, piece of wood in so they got a little like a buckle here a pull whatever and they've got another one here and uh, they just didn't cut them out. They just fiberglassed over them when they put the tanks in. They could have just cleaned it up, but yeah, that's what they did. So I'm just trying to show. I'm not trying to rag on them or anything, but I'm just trying to show like what things are could be like if you're doing a boat like this, which you might be able to expect. Because uh, I didn't expect to see that kind of stuff on a boat. Uh, but it's interesting. I mean, it's easy to clean up, but yeah. That's what it's like, and uh, so I had to deal with. So now I'm gonna just go back, get back to work. I'm gonna do all the clean up on this side here next. I'm not gonna film it, but uh, you'll see it when it's done. The other day it was way too hot. I didn't even film. Uh, I was way. I just wanted to get in here and get out of here. So uh, I did do some sanding. I did some extra filleting here where it was uh, yeah, a few little areas that didn't have enough uh, filler. And uh, down in this corner here, I filled all this in and with some uh, thickened epoxy to uh, uh, get a nice little transition here. So today I'm going to try to sand all of this all down in here and uh, finish sanding over in this area, get it smooth enough to uh, do some fiberglassing.
I'm just going to go through with a, a drill with a this sanding disc on it. I have a bigger one too, but I'll use this one and that one. I'll spare you that. Uh, it's just going along all these flat areas and grinding it down with like a, I don't know what that is on there, 60 grit or something to get it smooth. I don't want to go too far. This is the hole. Um, so I just want to get it to like this consistency over here just to, because it's uh, woven roving here and it's kind of thick. Um, I can put a thickened epoxy on it before I put the fiberglass in according to West Systems and the mayonnaise consistency. Uh, I'll fill in all those things and then put the fiberglass on. So I might do something like that just so I'm not especially over here messing around with the actual hull. There's no core here. This is it. So I don't want to sand too much of that away. Anyways, I'm going to go do that and uh, probably won't film it just because it's hot in here and it's. Uh, I just want to get, uh, get this done. So uh, nothing too exciting just going over with this drill thing. I had to add a little bit of, uh, you can see that there, but down in the corner around this I filled in a little more. It was a little crazy so I filled it in with some uh, thickened epoxy, colloidal silica. And I had to do a little more on this corner. Uh, just because it needed, I thought, a little more of a uh, curve so the fiberglass would sit in there. Probably still got to do a little more work over here to get some rid of some of these sharp edges. But um, it's all it's all ready to go. I just got to do a few little things and then cut up the fiberglass. So, I mean, the other side is just about in the same shape and I have the same type of things to do. So, all right, well, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and you come back for the next one. Uh, where we will be doing some fiberglass on that um, transom and wrapping that part of it up. So uh, until then, have a good one and we'll see you really soon right here on Renovations Fish.